tonight's tactical enhancement is just up the highway. Tonight we're playing Warhammer the Old World, 1500 points and I'm taking on Doug once again in a little farmstead which uh, for the sake of argument everything is what it looks like except for the uh, crops are decorative they don't uh, don't impinge upon anything on the table but otherwise oh look at that we have a nice little nice little farmstead I haven't dug up uh, this model kit in a while somewhere to grist the uh, meal or whatever the hell the terminology is and um, you know something for the beastmen to come running out of apparently because Doug has brought Beastman and uh, talk us through what you've got. Okay, you've got a general, a general there, BSB, two Tuscor chariots, um, ten Ungor raiders with short bows, seven oh, ambushes. ambushing gore. Oh, okay. Um, yep. Oh, so they're, they're not ambushing, I don't think. I think they uh, deploy them. And then. Um, that's 14 gore with uh, full command additional hand weapons. Right. On. And then these are my razor gore. So I've got a unit of three um, razor gore. So it's my first time trying razor gore in this edition. Right. On. What um, models are those? Uh, they're from um, hordes. They're, there was like a war machine spin-off, but a fantasy kind of war machine. Oh, okay. I quite like a lot of their sculpts actually. Yeah, um, they look funky, I have to say. They're, yeah. they're good, good models. Um, and so, yeah, so you know, I think they're like about 55 points each, but the 50 mil um, base, and this one, I guess for the game system that, I, that it was for, I've never actually played boards, but it's got its facing kind of marked. Um, oh, I see, yep. And then the the crux of the army, or what I'm, I'm looking forward to is because I've always liked dragon ogres. So <laughs> I've got, this is a lone dragon ogre uh, Shartak, so it's a champion. Um, he has a hand weapon. This is a crew of three dragon ogres, also with a shartak. They are armed with halberds um, to make you know one has a great weapon. That guy's a hand weapon, so split right, the difference. Yep. They're halberds. Right um, and then this epic squad of conversions, which I guess I was ahead of my time playing them like this, like four wide in eight, which that was shocking. But I think yeah. in old world they're oh. kind of meant to be. But so these guys have the, just to, for something different, have the torsos of actual ogre iron guts, but they have great weapons, and there is a shot hack so in there So these conversions, well. are they? Yes. Nice. Yes, because I had the old school ones, and just to yeah, have yeah, something yeah. Bit, great bit models. different. Um, and then the last but not least is the big kahuna, Shmigar the Gleaming, who is a dragon ogre shagoth. And he's going to call lightning down on me, I gather. Yes, hopefully, hopefully. Okay, well hopefully I can cannonball the motherfucker and give it yes. back to him. Yes. Right, and against that, uh, <laughs> having seen these guys trounce my wood elves recently, I have brought 1500 points worth of dwarfs and I'm uh, applying some of Sean's advice and we'll see if it works. Uh, three units of 15 warriors with shields and full command, so they get shield wall, and a unit of 10 miners. Which I don't know how that'll go because uh, I was that's rather thinking that's kind of war machine hunting territory normally. That's cool. We both have some kind of ambushing type sneaky stuff. Yeah, uh, two units of twelve um, iron breakers. Only one of which has full command because I only have twenty-four iron breakers with one set of full command. Um, and uh, yeah, two guns, the usual things. And I've got a engineer to try and keep the guns working. Standard bearer. It's pretty bog standard. Uh, two Thanes with great weapons and pistols because I had a few spare points and needed to stick them somewhere. And uh, one unit, it would be the old one out, has got a standard that uh, disrupts. Now, what does it do? It, it um, causes whatever weapons you've got or whatever bonuses you get from charging to be negated on the turn that you do your first charge against that unit. And that's it. I've gone light on characters uh, and light on uh, magic for this army. I just want to get as many. No magic defense in there? Just just what they come with. Just, okay. just the inherent minus oh, one. That was strategically the right choice because I have no magic you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by normally there's some wacky yeah, stuff going on. Uh, you know, but uh, I, uh, I thought I'd just try and get as, as many blocks on the table as I could mm -hmm. for 1500 points with, with some staying power and see how we go. Should be a fun one. 
Right, on that note, we will deploy and check in after that. All right, and we are deployed. We're playing fast armies, so no magic anywhere in the game today, which is a good thing. Uh, so we won't run out of time, and only a little bit of shooting. And for the, uh, well, I'll say the Dragon Ogre army. Mm -hmm. Dragon Ogres with halberds. Dragon Ogres with great weapons. Mm -hmm. Chariot. Uh, massive riffraff. Dudes, yep. Uh, those razor thingy me dudes. Mm -hmm. And the big fella behind them. Yep. Uh, another chariot and riffraff on the flank. Yep. I assume we'll come running around the buildings there to do something behind the lines. And up against that, I have iron blank break, iron breakers. Let's try, try and get our language properly. I've only had one drink. Holy hell! Um, warriors, the cannon there on the hill in the middle, which is fairly predictable, I suppose. Uh, iron breakers here again, and two more units. Uh, I've got my general. He's really just a basic thane with a great weapon. Stana bearer, who's a standard, basically a thane with a shield. Bearing in mind they've got Gromwell armor and plate armor, so they're rerolling ones in their armor save. Uh, and um, let's see, I've got a box down thane here as well with a great weapon. Uh, worth bearing in mind, I've got shield wall and all of my infantry. And the iron breakers, they've got stubborn as well as shield wall. But on top of that, um, they've got Gromwell weapons. I think, and I might check that. I think they do. I'll have a look. Now, Grommel Armour, I think, which uh, gives them the um, uh, reroll ones for the armour. I'll, I'll check that in a minute. And um, they've got the 6 plus uh, ward save. So uh, they're, they're tough. I just got to remember all the bloody rules so I don't forget those extra dice that I'm going to get in the middle. And we've got them lined up in a lovely little row here. And we'll see how they go. And on that note, let's grab a dice and we'll see who gets first turn. Two and a five. Ooh, looks like you'll be getting okay. the first turn. All right, on that note, we'll check in after Dragon Ogre's turn one. Huh. Right, end of uh, Dragon Ogre's turn one, and they're coming right at us. That 14 inches is... I don't know what it is. Every army I'm playing is coming right at me. Yeah. Yeah, 14 inch move on the bloody charge. That's that's fast. This army is getting in quick. I feel like Dragon Ogres versus um, your corn army would be quite a fun one as well. With like just oh, chopping each other. That'd be hilarious. It'd be a fucking monster mash. Well, that's a game for another day. Um, yeah. So in the interim, um, that's about hit. They came running forward, and uh, this chap tried the quickening on himself, and it worked, and yep. he didn't quite wound himself, which is entertaining. But I'll have to bear that in mind for later. <laughs> I think he'll it, run out before I, I have to recast it to actually do anything. Yeah, I well, want to try. hopefully he'll injure himself a couple of times because <laughs> it's probably easier than me doing it. Yeah. Uh, on that note, over to Dwarf's turn one. End of Dwarf turn one. Uh, I didn't want to go backwards much in order to give myself more distance, but I realized that going forward might be a little bit stupid at this point. I'm in no position to do a, a, a charge against these guys. So I wanted to give myself a bit of time to get things in order. So these guys shuffled left and um, went down the hill a bit that freed up the organ gun. And uh, these guys just wheeled back slightly, which technically is moving back about an inch, but uh, it also gets me in a better angle to deal with these guys. It makes it a bit less likely they'll get combo charges all at once. Uh, couldn't bring in the minus just yet, it's too early. And the cannon did one wound off a chariot, and you'll notice it's not there. Mm -hmm. That's because the organ gun did its fucking job. Yeah, three, uh, three wounds. Yeah, and interestingly, um, you rolled up an awful lot of saves. Yeah, it did. Um, if it had done one less wound, I would have survived. I yeah. Take, I made four, because oh, you had that. Uh, Armour Bane Armour one Bane, yeah. got through and then I think of the six other ones I say four on five plus but it was yeah, just enough. That's the thing right the organ gun used to be minus three now it's only minus three if you're all six otherwise it's minus one uh, but then most things have less armour so we're, we're learning more of the swings and roundabouts of this version of the game 
Anyway, that's it for Dwarf Turn 1. We will check in at the end of Dragon Ogre. And oh my, isn't it a Dragon Ogre turn yeah. uh, in just a moment. And of Dragon Ogre turn 2. And they crashed into us good and proper. Uh, these guys crashed into this unit, bumped off three. Uh, did we do any wounds in return? No. no. But we won due to standard. Yeah, we won on combat res. So already having the extra rank to absorb casualties. Small frontage reduced me by, what, one or two strength three attacks. Didn't seem to make much difference. Yeah. My Thane whiffed. I could have got a good wound or two out of this if he'd not, you know, rolled a lot of snake eyes. Yes. But we won anyway, so that's good. Oh, There's wait. Some... Oh, yeah, and I gave ground. Yep, we I gave ground and we followed up. Yeah. Uh... Over here, what happened is this unit and this unit both declared a charge on this unit, which was a bit further up. Mm -hmm. um, they killed... I rolled very high and the charge actually made it with both of them. Surprising. Yeah, both of them got sixes. Um, I was hoping that the only one would make it, if any, but no, they both made it. But because they both made it, the way we had to square it up had them connect with this unit as well. Um, that meant the casualties were distributed across both units and he knocked out eight and plus an extra couple of while he jumped up and down the corpse of my fucking champion in the <laughs> breaker unit. Um, we used our stubborn rule, uh, so they fell back, they went back a whole six inches. That got him out of combat because these guys couldn't they couldn't um, get past the building. The building yeah, yeah they were, they were, there was more of them behind the building than there were otherwise. And this we used our um, shield wall for this unit. So actually the armbreakers have still got shield wall, they haven't used it yet. But this unit used its shield wall in order to only move back two inches. Mm -hmm. um, that was partly because if I'd rolled a six on these guys, then this, this lot would have connected with these fellas too. And the other thing is it would have got them outside of counter charge range of this lot, which I really need to get into combat. So we, um, we've withstood the impact another fucking impact or two waiting to happen um, and these sneaky buggers came on with an eye for my gun line as you do and this little fucker here came around the edge so I've got some choices to make about uh, where to counter charge or where to otherwise brace for a coming attack and I have a target rich environment for the cannon oh and um, this guy managed to wound himself with his own magical electric bolts. Oh, but then I saved them, luckily. Oh, that's right, he saved them, didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was hilarious. All right, on that note, uh, ooh, I think we better go on with Dwarf Turn 2. Mm -hmm. All right, end of Dwarf Turn 2. And I've done some things which have been proof in concept, but not necessarily worked in the flesh. Oh, let's see. Um, these two units charged, well, those, and we bumped off one and uh, they fled. We pursued, they ran a very, very long way because they're swift stride, yep. and we crashed into this thing, mm -hmm. which will be fine, except we're possibly going to get counter charged by them and that next turn, so this could all turn to shit. Mm -hmm. We did canister from the uh, cannon at these guys because they passed their panic test. Um, I was kind of hoping to put my engineer between them and the cannon, but I, I forgot. Uh, over here, we so these guys had followed up into this unit of warriors, and then uh, yeah, so we were locked in. So these guys charged back into the fray and totally whiffed. They didn't hit a damn. Well, they hit one thing and then rolled one one to wound. That was crap. Uh, the rank and file dwarfs didn't kill a thing, but my two thanes here managed to take a wound each off of these guys. Yeah. And these guys did really badly return. They only killed one. Mm -hmm. And th this unit here had managed to charge in the flank. So when we rolled up the combat resolution, it was uh, I'd won by nine. And we we're just joking. Oh well, you need to roll snake eyes together. This one. So naturally, he rolls the bloody snake eyes. The dramatic one followed by the slow oh my roll. lordy my so in theory I should have smashed these guys and chased them off with three mm -hmm. units uh, able to chase them down as it is we're now stuck here uh, the chariot will get us in the face 
these guys cannot charge into this melee, but we'll do some measurement in a bit because they're actually on small bases. But we're going to have to suss up whether there's room for them to have another crack at the iron breakers, and there might be. Yeah. So we're going to figure that out in just a minute. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of counter charging. Oh, and, and of course, you know, in true dwarf fashion, my um, organ gun, even with the engineer, did absolutely f sweet Fanny Adams. Yes. Uh, the the reroll of a two oh, turned into uh, a misfire. Yeah, of course. And of course, we joked about that before I decided to <laughs> reroll anyway and got yeah. the misfire. But I figure when you roll a two and a two with an organ gun, um, you may as well do the reroll. Absolutely. The cannon grape showed five off. Yes. But um, thankfully, because the beastmen now. Uh, stock come with the mark of chaos undivided, which lets me reroll panic. So that's why they're still there because they failed right. the first test and I did get on that reroll. Alrighty. Well, on that note, uh, over to Beastman. Well, I should say Chaos Ogres. Uh, yeah. Turn three. I, said, I like Beastman, but yeah, Dragon, Dragon Ogres. Dragon Ogres. So. End of Beastman turn three. Uh, Right, well, we had charged up into this thing. This flank charged, they barreled on in and ignored the cannon and tried to break the line. Perfectly sensible thing to do. Uh, the only reason we stuck around is because we hadn't used our shield wall yet and they got the charge against us, so we used shield wall. Uh, actually, these guys used stubborn, so they've still got shield wall. Um, but yeah, otherwise we would have been rooted. Uh, over here, um, these guys charged in. They Fit by like five mil through the gap, yes. uh, killed four outright and didn't do anything in return. And they, we used shield wall, yep. and they got pushed back instead yep. of um, falling back in good right. order and then basically being chased off. Yes. Uh, okay, then we. This is the unit that had the banner on it that uh, means you can't use charging special rules. Mm -hmm. So the chariot went in and was very disappointed, presumably. Lost no, no impact hits, no spear bonus. No, no. Yes, and we all rolled rather poorly to try and actually kill anything. Both of our dice rolls were ridiculous on that front. Um, I was making armor saves all over the place, but, could but I couldn't, finish, I couldn't wound anything. One drag. Oh, no, no, it was already dead, sorry. My yeah, yeah okay. but uh, we did win by six, and they're well outside of reach of the mm -hmm. um, general and uh, the standard bearer, so they chuffed off, and mm -hmm. we chased them, but of course they got away. Yep. But this unit clipped the back edge of this dragon ogre unit. We'll see how that works. It's now turn uh, three for the dwarfs, this will be the last one because it's already too bloody late and I have mm -hmm. to try and do something intelligent at work tomorrow. Um, oh yeah, and this little fight here, uh, we went one for one. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Uh, we'll check in very quickly uh, at the end of dwarf turn three. End of dwarf turn three and we're calling it because it's pumpkin o'clock. What happened? Right, well, let's do the good news first. Uh, over here, the combat resolution from these multiple small units and little flank attacks and standards and etc. is working a treat. Yeah. I, I hate it when Sean is right, but he does it rather a lot. And this whole multiple blocks of 4x4. Four four, to, to be fair, had you not rolled a bunch of those 6 plus ward saves, that Iron Breaker unit would be dead. So well, maybe the... True, yeah. but I it's whiffed a stable. hell of a lot of attacks, so oh, I swings and roundabouts. Yeah, it, I mean, I, I, I can't bitch about my dice because the dice have been ridiculous in both directions. But I feel it's not conclusive that small units is always the way to go. Uh, well, it's working a downside yeah. better than I've been going previously okay, with Sami. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think this is probably the first one where we're in a running chance of actually yeah. winning. Uh, well, that might still be a tie. Um, so what's happened is both the Dragon Ogre units... Like this dragon over unit and the chariot fled last turn and I failed to catch him. Then I tried to charge him and failed to catch him again. Uh, and uh, this dragon ogre unit, it did kill quite a few chaps, but it lost on combat res by two, fled. And because it's the last turn of the game, that's three units fleeing, which is nice. Uh, over here, we tried to blast these guys and make them run away with the cannon, but naturally I, I rolled a misfire and then I got the engineer to help him out and misfired again. Ah. Alright, we're going to get a rules clarification in a minute. <clears throat> uh, the miners finally fucking turned up in time to do nothing. Uh, we went one for one. No, we, I, I lost one organ gun crewman, did nothing in return, but we're still in the fight, which means that those, those um, 
well, I'd, I'd say those miners would do their job, but this slot and this thing and this thing slaughtered my unit of warriors to a beard and then chased down the remaining um, Thane. Uh, this, I mean, there's a standard bearer general, there's that monster and that guy. I was massively outclassed in that fight. And the Shagot did get his zappy zap off to. Yeah, them, so. yeah, that helped. Um, now we've been we've been looking. So ba basically, where we are is uh, I'm down by a bit over two hundred points in terms of casualties, plus a, they've got twenty five points for the standard, I suppose. The general's over here, and standard bearer's over here. Where we have a dilemma, and I'm going to get called on this, I know, is we were interpreting the rule that if you've got shield wall. What normally happens is, instead of uh, giving ground, so in instead of falling back in good order, shield and shield wall, you give ground. That's where we've read it. Yes. But because they're outnumbered, oh, then then what would not what the way we interpreted it is okay. You if you were to give ground, then you would flee. So correction: if you were to fall back in good order, you would flee because you're outnumbered. But instead, you're using shield wall. So you, uh, what, what's in the fact? You've read something. No, not the fact in the rule. It says because you can only actually use once per game during a turn when which was charged, and in that one you can't use the shield wall because there was no actual charges. No, you did charge because I fell back and I uh, had previously. And it's the give ground thing, so that's not a charge per se. It's the overrun. Oh really? Yeah, because you know how you did the stubborn thing, so you gave I, them, I moved up. I thought that when you chase somebody after they've fallen back in good order, it counts as a charge, and you get all your charge bonuses. Oh, it does count as it, but it's not a, a charge. Um, and because in they did the stubborn thing before, so they gave ground. I think it was. Yeah, because if if I don't know, automatically for even ah, oh, because you because the linebreakers have the stubborn and the. Yeah, so the, they'd used stubborn before first, so in, in order back. to fall back without having Ooh, to do a break test. Yes, they all um, did that. So that was fine. And this time, and because you guys kind of barreled on in we, and yes. you get your charge bonuses. Why? Oh, that's the one for the fact. We're not yeah. going to work it out tonight. But, you know, if you actually know that rule, feel free to uh, yes. comment because um, we're going to have to fucking figure it out through a fact or something. Uh, that's the only reason we're really counting these guys as being here. These guys are about 195 points. Yes. So, in terms of what... So, at the moment, you're, you've got about 216 odd points. In uh, terms of you. what... Or something of that nature. In terms of... Uh, what, did I, what did I kill? Two chariots and a whole uh, bunch of dragon riggers. Oh, well, you killed one chariot. Yep, but at the five. moment, with these are running. But it's turn three, so I don't know... Well, yeah, it's, it's turn three because we got to start it a bit late and we have to call yeah. it on time. So, if it were a tournament and time was called and you stop where you stop, um, I would have won. Uh, but if it was, we didn't have to go to work tomorrow and we could play through the rest of the game, um, I've got all this slot over here. Presumably, some of this would rally, we'd yeah. fight, we'd fight again. I've got a couple of thanes here, a reasonable amount of stuff. He'd go somewhere discreet and out of the way. Yeah. Uh, these guys would no doubt get slaughtered. Yeah. Cannon would kill something, maybe, we hope. Well, um, hopefully, we try kill that remaining one, dude. Yeah, and look, I would have positioned my miners more carefully. They probably would have come in over here. They only just came on, so... Yeah, I just put them there for decorative effect. <laughs> yeah. Because the, the objective is to get into here, but yes. we would have known that these guys are probably going to crush through, so we would get out of the way. Yeah. So these guys would reconfigure for a ship fight. We'd sort out that Ungor, who may or may not kill the uh, organ gun in the meantime. Yeah, quite a lot. Pretty even. It, pretty even. Yeah, it, I don't know what the deal is because, like, same with the Ironbreakers over there. You've only got the one dude. Is there a thing where if you get units below, um, strength, I think you get twenty five percent of the points if yeah, if a unit's like halfway or less, something of that nature. Yeah. So, so like yeah, you probably get another couple hundred points. Yeah. And, I, and again, with Fling, um, I got the chariot that's dead, and who knows what would happen with these guys. To be fair, it was only the dwarven short legs, which is why they yeah, didn't that's run. Right, they yeah. rolled the same. Um, and even when it, when I charged the flea, uh, you only got you only got away by yeah, one, one by, by yeah. my stumpy yeah. little minus one yeah. to charge. 
So yeah, it's been a really interesting close game of people actually using tactics and some of them working. Yeah, it was, it was a very fun. It was again, we're still um, learning, but it's great to see all the different kind of rules. And even at one thousand five hundred points, old world is so many different rules, and it's so different. It still takes a while. Yeah. Just even with the combats, with the fallback and good order, it all interacts so much that it takes a while to figure out what what's kind of going yeah. on. Um, that, that's right. And, and I think that a lot of like the rule book. It's a bit vague with some things, and you know, there's especially with the multi-unit combat. It's kind of hard. Yeah, but it there's, was, there's still it was a bit of learning because um, there's things we do habitually which turn out to be wrong. We've got to mm. check them. Anyway, what have we learned? Um, Iron Breakers are very good with the Grommel armor giving the reroll of one plus the six plus ward save against yeah, everything. So yeah, they've yeah. had a huge uh, boost in terms of durability. Um, plus, of course, having the stubborn plus the shield wall, the way that we're playing effectively means that they're immune to kind of running away two turns, which is very, um, yeah. very powerful. You, could, drag you could smash them, and as long as they're still they're, there, yeah, they, then the one. Yep. effectively unbreakable for a turn. <laughs> oh, I, I have learned, look, fear is very different mm. now, because um, we looked that up. It doesn't make any difference in an actual kind of ongoing combat with weapon skill or, or anything. Um, so that was that's quite um, interesting to know. Yeah. Also, fear of stopping you charging though. That's that's brutal. Mm, that used to be mm, terror in the last rolls. Mm, and um, the way that we've played it is that if you kind of overrun, you ignore the terror, which I think is correct. Armor bane being on the six, it's going to take a bit of getting used to because I'm used to just sh shoveling up yeah, all those yeah, successful that's, that's wound rolls. Right. Um, but dragon ogres are tanky as hell. Oh, the that armor. is a tough army. The um the. Th the heavy arm upgrade absolutely worthwhile in terms of what I've been rolling. I think I got minimum three extra saves because of that extra three points on each dude. Um, I do think great weapons probably the way to go in this one because I'm just um, playing around. I had one hand weapon crew, uh, one hand crew, one great weapon crew. Against dwarfs, if yeah. you've got the the reach to charge, great weapons on the charge are yeah. absolutely brutal against absolutely. dwarfs. But it, they're only initiative, I think, what, two anyway, so the... Yeah, the, if, the, if you're going up against elves with yeah. this army, it wouldn't give you the same bonus, because you, yeah. you'll be equal on initiative. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, these guys against dwarves are very much tooled uh, up for the job. Uh, I've also learned Grape Shot is brutal. Oh, That's yeah. really cool. It was great to experience that. Well, I was on the wrong side of it, but it was cool to actually see it kind of um, happen, how it works in I'm this I'm of the view the grape shot's really the only fucking reason to take a stand to cannon these yeah, days. Yeah, it's always better than the actual normal shot, which is... Um, that's that's right. No, normal shot... Oh, yeah, I, I, I still have opinions about cannons. I actually did a little bit with it today, but nah. Mm -hmm. um, that said, it's still, it's still there, and the only casualty is a self-inflicted black powder kind of... Well, yes, that, that's that right. When I, when I went to... Um, fire my cannon at these guys to try and maybe get a panic test out of them um he, he killed one of our own crewmen <laughs> yeah um, Shmigar the Glim the Shagots are really good I actually have a healing potion on him which I didn't um, end up using because he didn't take a wound the whole game that um toughness 5 and what a 3 plus mm. armor save is in this edition it's a lot harder to get through that 3 plus yeah, armor save and, even with an iron break and I have to say um I could have played this flank differently. I got a bit carried away thinking, oh, well, they're going to go after the, the cannon. But no, that, that unit is a Death Star, and I just didn't count it as one. That was my mistake. <laughs> it's, um, it's a very weak Death Star, but because we've both gone, we've gone a kind of similar in that none of us has any lords. Well, so my in, two in, 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 in a 1500 yeah. point game, ranks. Uh, enough enough troops to soak up some wounds yes. and two, those two characters wow that was and, that was brutal and with the beastmen having that rule where if they charge over three they get a plus one strength that makes yeah. a huge um, difference beastmen's a very dangerous army but you know what I, I, I can't begrudge any of the rules that my like that the enemy army has because they're all characterful none of Absolutely. them are super overwhelming powerful Absolutely. they're all things you could counter with different types of strategies and tactics mm. and, and we did yeah. on this flank mm. I didn't do as good a job of it here uh, and you know, for, for what they are, they fucking well should be tanks. Absolutely, especially um, and Iron Breakers are, as as they should be in the law, the most durable of the kind of infantry and um, beastmen are very aggressive. Oh, they they took a pounding, and in, in some regards, they don't deserve to be there. Yeah. But 
they are tough as nails. I mean, you, you pay a premium in points for yeah. them. And and they're slow, so, you know, it's... it's yeah, they, yeah, they, you have the initiative problem. The, the rules, I think, do an excellent job of representing what they should be because of the law, mm. um, and that's lovely to see. I will remember the... Um, I was the first time, of course, experiencing the banner which stops the charge bonuses, so that's... <laughs> really first time we managed to get it to work. Yeah, um, and the Razor Glore are quite different in this version with no stomps. Mm. I still think they're good, and now they have an armor save, which I will remember, even if it's only a 6+, plus, so they've changed a little bit. We need um, to get these chaps on some square bases because they're nice-looking miniatures. Yeah, or just a movement tray so that they look a bit... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it didn't have any impact on this game, but I'm looking at him thinking, oh. what are they doing here? Yeah, yeah, wrong system there. Code jumping. Um, um, yeah, no, and I have to say, this is the first time where I felt that the dwarves were doing what they were supposed to do. Yeah. But to be fair, it's a good match, and I have to kind of engage you with Beast Man. So I think thematically, it's a fun, it's a good kind of matchup. It meshes well. True, true. I've been, um, I think I've probably had about, this maybe the third or fourth game I've had with Dwarfs, and yes. um, one of them was probably a bit of a scratch match. We're just trying to learn the rules. Yep. I um, imagine the Chaos were fun when we had a bit of a play around. I think we only got one half turns on top of Yeah, games. that's right, against uh, whatever it was. Yeah. But the, um, yeah, Sean's been just charging headlong at me with various green things and other things and uh, um, this is the first time I felt the dwarves have actually had some control and how they respond to it. Yes, uh, that might have helped in that this army that I chose by virtue of having very few actual beastmen and being more of a bestial monster kind of army, I felt it made like a pretty, you know, the dwarfs nobly defending this kind of homestead and the crazy drag movers trying to rampage um, out. I think it was a very fun game and I actually learned a fair bit obviously I have a huge amount to learn to do in terms of the rules and stuff but yep. it was cool to see more different rules come into it like terror and fear and things which I haven't yeah, seen yeah. We, we're getting a handle of this game uh, and I think we'll be able to do more interesting things I, I still feel the sweet spot for this game is 2000 points yes um, but when you're learning 1500 is a good yes. amount definitely yeah well I think on that note um, thanks for watching feel free to hit like subscribe make a comment let us know if we misunderstood something around this whole bloody stubborn fallback nonsense, shield walls, etc. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's time to call it. And, and sorry, the, also, I've been, maybe wrongly, we've been playing it so that the armor bane that the Dragon Ogres have does work on their stomps. Ah. If that's wrong, um, please let us know because a couple of times I'd get the six on the stomp roll and do the armor reducing, but that might be Good wrong. point. No, well, that's something to think about for later. We need, we need to read some more rules. But for now, uh, I've got to get up early tomorrow and do some, some intelle intellectual labour. So it's time to call it a night.